before I do that, I just want you to have a think about when you're navigating through mathematics, what do I mean by that? Well, when you, when you see a question and you have various feelings about it, right? You either feel, yes, I've seen this before, I know how to do it, or you either feel like I have no idea where to start, when did we even learn this, right? Here's what we want to think about. Anytime we are feeling like that, we just want to think about, first of all, what's the goal of what we're trying to do? Okay, when we're navigating, we want to know where we're headed. We want to know what's the goal. And then we also think about what tools have we been given to solve things like this? What tools have we been given to solve things like this, right? For example, quadratics. When we look at quadratics, there are two main things that we want to do. We either want to factorize or we want to solve. We either want to factorize or to solve. Can anyone remember the difference between those two? So factorize and solving. I'll give you an example of just a simple question. Uh, yeah, Flynn, what's up? What you got? Is what, sorry? Simplifying. Simplifying, yep. Yeah. What's simplifying? <laughs> solving is yeah. finding A. Making it less complicated. Now, here's the thing, right? These two look very, very similar, yet they are actually quite different. Right? Factorizing, as people have said, is simplifying or making less complicated. Essentially, I'm looking for, look for what's in common, okay? Look for what's in common. The trap is that you will just look at this and you'll just try and say, oh, there's an x there, I'm trying to find it, okay? You're not trying to find x, that's what solving is. That's when you want to find the variables, okay? Factorizing means we look for what's in common, and there are a few different methods that we've learned to factorize. Okay, this is the easiest one, and hence the name. I call this simple factorizing. Right? I just say what's in common between five x and sixty. What's in common there? Yeah, Joe. Five. Yep. Yeah. So I'd say I take the five out, and when I say take out the five, I'm introducing those brackets, and you can think about it like division, right? You just get left with x plus twelve. Rhiannon, how do I check this again? How do I check that that's right? Expand. You expand it back out, right? That's the opposite thing. It should work out. There are a few different other methods of factorizing. So that's the simple one. We also have grouping in pairs. Okay, so that's when you have four terms. That's when you have four terms there. Grouping in pairs, that's when you have four terms. So I think there's actually an example on your sheet. It's a little bit confusing. I think it's a cubed plus a squared plus a plus 1. When you look at this, there's nothing in common between all of them, but you see that there are four terms. So you want to think about the grouping in pairs method. Okay? Um, trinomials. What's a trinomial? Three. Yeah, think about that number there. Tri means three. There are three terms. Okay? So the trinomials, I'm looking for... Is there an example in your sheet? Oh, they had x squared plus 5x plus 6. Was that the example? Yeah. yeah. Okay, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Let me just do that really quickly. I know it's not. Let me just do it over here. I've got more room here. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, remember, to factorize trinomials, we think about those three letters to help us remember. P, S, F. Product, sum, and factors. I want to think, what multiplies to 6 and what adds to 5? What are those two numbers going to be? 3 and 2. 3 and 2, right? And remember, what does, always think about the goal. This is why I always come back to you. Don't lose track of what you're trying to do here. I'm trying to factorize a trinomial. We've been factorized. I'm looking for what's in common. I'm trying to put it into brackets. So I go back to this and I say, well, how do I put this into brackets? I use my two factors here. x plus 3, x plus 2. And like before, you can always check by expanding it back out. Those factors just slot straight into those brackets there. There is one more that's a little bit trickier. And it's called... Where did I leave my marker? Yeah. Is it the last one? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to say, good question. Remember, I want to think what multiplies to 6, what adds to 5. What two numbers multiply to 6 and what two numbers add to 5? 3 and 2. Yeah, so it's not 1 and 6 because they don't, they don't add to 5. But 3 and 2, those add to 5 and those multiply to 6. That's how I get those two numbers. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay, last one. Uh, it was actually the last one on your sheet. Does anyone, did anyone get it? The last one on your do now. Yes, it's called difference. Write this down. Difference of two squares. So that's when you have something like this. X squared minus 9. Okay? X squared minus 9. So if I go back to here, let's look at X squared minus 9. Initially, like it doesn't look like any of our other methods would, would work. It's not a trinomial. There's only two things. It's not simple. 
because there's nothing in common between both of these, and it's definitely not grouping in pairs. There's only two there, okay? But we remember there is a, we call them identities. It's just kind of like a rule, right? That says if I have, I'll write in black, so it's a bit different, a squared minus b squared, I can factorize that. I can put that into brackets as a plus b, a minus b. Why is that? Well, if you expand this back out, you will get back to this, okay? Because remember, again, thinking about the goal, the goal of factorizing is to put things into brackets. I have something like this right now. There are no brackets there. I want to try and put it into brackets. Essentially, this is just going to be matching it up. Yeah, Rips, can you think about what I'm going to need? Yeah, so remember, we, want to, we actually want to use this identity here right now. It's just kind of like matching it up, right? My x is obviously a. Now, be careful here. What's my b going to be? Three. Yeah, so initially you're like, oh, it looks like it's 9, right? But remember, this is b squared. So another way I can write this is x squared minus 3 squared, because that's what 9 is, right? And then, oh, that's really simple to put it into this form here. That's just going to be x plus 3, x minus 3. Any questions about that one? That one's a little bit trickier because it doesn't look like you can do anything there. But those are our methods of factorizing. Okay, so that's how you navigate through those. You always have different types of factorizing questions, but you should always be able to use one of these methods. Yes, Flynn? How did you get to the... Yeah, you're good? Cool. Now, with solving, it's pretty much the same because with solving, the only difference is we're trying to find that variable, right? Yeah, we're trying to find... Well, we don't always use x, but we're trying to find a variable. With, um, with some caveats, right? Because just some things to remember. Let's go back to this one here. If I have, for example, a, was it, x plus 3, x plus 2 is equal to 0. Remember, I actually have to solve this now. If I'm asked to solve it, I have to find a value for x. Does anyone remember how I actually do this one? If I've got something like this equals 0? Yeah, there's two cases, right? So, solving, when I'm solving something like this, I use the idea that if I have a times b is equal to zero, so I have two things equal to zero, I have two possibilities. Either a is zero or either b is zero. And in this case, that's exactly what I can write. I can say either x plus 3 is zero or x plus 2 is zero. And so either x equals to minus 3 or x equals to minus 2. Those are my two cases there. Okay. But there's also one more method that I taught you when we're solving... Uh, quadratics. Does anyone remember that method? There's a formula. The discriminant tells us how many solutions. Where does the discriminant come from there? I don't know. Yeah, what is it called? Quadratic formula. Yeah. The quadratic formula, the quadratic formula will always work to solve quadratic equations, any type of quadratic, but it just takes longer. Okay? And they may even specify certain methods that you need to use. Okay? They may even specify, but the credit form always works. This is uh, probably the one that people have most trouble with, so the bell's about to go in three minutes. Let's just see if I can try to get it through. Okay? Non right angled tri triangles. Okay? There are two things that you are asked to do generally. You are generally either asked, okay, can you find an unknown side or can you find an unknown? Yes, an unknown angle. Okay. Now, there are also two formulas that we learnt to do those. What were they? Sine and cosine. Sine and cosine. So I either have the sine rule or I have the cos rule. The question is, when do I use which one? Okay. Well, the answer to that is when. For the sine rule, you use the sine rule when you have two pairs of sides and angles. Two pairs of sides and angles. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean if I have a triangle like this, and let's say I have x, 84 degrees, 52 degrees, and 10 centimeters, right? You can see clearly I have two pairs of sides and angles. Okay, that's when I want to use sine rule. Okay. When do I want to use the cos rule? Well, it's when I have three sides involved with the question. Okay, so I um, I really need three sides involved with the question. So something, oh, and sorry, one angle. So something like this. So there's my unknown angle, four, eight, and six, something like that, right? Now the important thing to note is 
depending on which rule we're using, depending on whether I'm trying to find an unknown side or angle, those variables could be jumbled up slightly. Okay? But the important thing to remember is, if you have two pairs of sides and angles, you generally want to use sine rule. If you want to find, uh, if you have three sides and one angle, you're genuinely using cos rule. Okay? So that's something that you definitely want to put down on your learning log. I'll just write down the formulas again here, just to finish up. Oh, just a quick note with sine rule, right? They look very similar, but when we're using sine rule, the way that we write the formula is, if it's what, what we're trying to find, we put on the numerator, what we put on the top, right? So remember, with our um, triangles, with sine and cos rule, we use the little letter to denote the sides. Just let me finish off before you go. And with, um, if I want to find an angle, I'll just reverse that out. It just makes it a bit easier. I'll just flip that. It just makes it a bit easier to solve that way, okay? And don't forget, I will still be here at lunchtime if you need any help. So definitely feel free to come along. Okay. Let me just finish off writing these questions here. So cos rule for unknown side. Um, C squared equals to B squared. A, B plus C. What did I write on over cos 2AB. <laughs>